Welcome to the GSMC Fitness Podcast, the show that helps you sort through all of the trends, new and old, of the fitness world. We'll talk about yoga, running, Zumba, weightlifting, and everything in between. Whether you've got your fitness routine down to a science or you're just starting out and looking for direction, you'll find educational and entertaining information on the GSMC Fitness Podcast. guys and welcome to GSMC Fitness Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your new host Cynthia and I'm going to start off today's show with sharing a little bit about me just so you guys the listeners are like you know know a little bit more about me and can take me a little more serious. You're probably like who the heck is this girl talking right now into my headphones and I'm about to tell you. So Again, my name is Cynthia. I actually, uh, if you are subscribed to any of the GSMC shows, I also host the health and wellness, uh, the health and wellness show at GSMC. So if you like the fitness podcast, you are going to want to subscribe to the health and wellness one because they're same but different, you know? And I am a personal trainer as well. My fitness journey started off in, well, I've always been active. I started playing basketball in third grade and then I did cheerleading for 10 years. I've always been active, but I wasn't, that doesn't necessarily mean I was always the healthiest. Um, you know, I still eating junk food. I had a very irregular sleep schedule. My hydration wasn't there. So I'd say I started getting really into fitness and started taking my health seriously and started keeping a consistent exercise regimen. I'd say in like 2017, that's when it really started. That's when I also met my boyfriend and he uh, was a college football player. So he was always, you know, had weights, had a weights in the morning and was always working out. And if you were to see the size on this guy, he's huge. Okay. Like you can tell he works out. So he definitely motivated me to start taking my health seriously and to start working out. So 2017 that's when I consistently started working out and hitting the gym and you know just really falling in love with fitness like I seriously became addicted to it and through that process I ended up losing uh, about 30 pounds in a matter of like six months in 2017 so I shed the weight pretty quickly but I was also I'm the type of person that like when I commit to something I 150% commit, okay? I know that's, like, not even possible, 150%, but I really, like, I'm just trying to sh explain that I really try to give it my all, like, when I put my mind onto something. So I really dove all in, and I was consistent. I was working out five times a week. I was stopped eating out. I completely cut out alcohol for those six months because that was my biggest thing. I was partying a lot, so I was drinking a lot. And when you drink after the club, you want to go get some greasy food, you know, tacos and burgers and all that stuff. So I was about that partying life um, for a minute. And then once I started working out, I started, obviously, my circle of friends changed. I started to surround myself with people who were like-minded and who you know, we're healthy and we're going to the gym and just on a different path. And now I'm here, uh, you know, hosting a fitness and uh, health and wellness show at a network. And I'm so grateful and I'm so happy to be here. And I'm so happy and grateful to be now the host of the fitness podcast. Like I said, they're the same but different, very similar to health and wellness, but they're also in two different lanes here. And I specialize in corrective exercise. I also specialize in slow motion strength training. So that's basically like 
moving and pushing the weights at a very slow weight. That's actually how I started, or I started at a slow motion strength training facility in the Bay Area, and I was at that facility as a personal trainer for about a year and a half, and then I moved to the Sacramento area, and then I was a personal trainer and a fitness instructor at two gyms here in the Sacramento area. I also got certified as a bar instructor, so I was starting to teach bar classes, and all of that went down the drain once coronavirus came in and, you know, stopped all our lives, so I definitely miss teaching, I miss training, I miss the gym, I am, like, so sad, and I just miss it terribly, don't you guys? Uh, It's just... Home workouts have definitely been, it's been a hard transition for me. You know, I'm used to the heavy barbells and going back, you know, going from gym workouts to home workouts it has been a pretty hard adjustment for me. And that's basically in a nutshell, you know, my health and fitness background. Oh, and I'm taking a, a free, a free TRX certifying course this Friday so I'm super excited about that. If you guys don't know or are interested, TRX is offering um, a free online course. Uh, I think you're able to register for any day that suits your schedule. Um, but I would go hop on it fast because spaces are filling up very quick. No, I'm not sponsored by them, but I just want to share with those listeners who are very much into fitness or who are wanting to get certified or who are just bored out of their mind during this quarantine time and want to get their hands, you know, learn something new during this quarantine. That's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to learn something new during quarantine. And so I'll be TRX certified after this Friday. So I'm super stoked. Like I said, I'm always constantly learning. It's one of the many things I love about fitness. Uh, You know, it's always evolving. New trends are coming in and out. And that's what I'll be sharing with you guys uh, throughout you know, the fitness podcast, I'll be sharing the top trends, what works, what doesn't work. I'll be giving you guys my personal trainer expertise here, what I think, you know, what works and all that good stuff. And let's finally get into what we're here to talk about, right? So as you are able to tell from today's title, body weight training, seems like this is the the one of the last options we're all left with since all gyms and fitness centers are closed due to the pandemic. And also we're left with body weight training because dumbbells and it seems like all other pieces of exercise equipment are sold out everywhere. It's crazy, crazy times we're living in now. Never in a million years Did I ever think I would have to scavenge for dumbbells and resistance bands and be bidding online for exercise equipment? It's so insane to me how the supply just completely evaporated. So obviously without all this equipment being available to us anymore, what does that leave us with? It leaves us with body weight training. Now I know this isn't ideal but we have to make the best out of it, best make the best of what we got and of our situation. But don't be fooled, you guys. Body weight training can be just as effective as strength training if your form is correct and if you are progressively overloading your exercises in, you know, the correct manner. AKA making it more and more challenging each and every time. That's basically what progressive overload means. And basically, for those of you who are like, what the heck does body weight training mean? Body weight training or body weight exercises involve literally just you, no equipment, no nothing, just you and your own body weight resistance. And you guys, you would be surprised, but how sore you can become just from performing body weight exercises, such as like squats, lunges, push-ups, pull-ups or chin-ups, whatever you want to call them. So do not underestimate body weight training. Um, Like I said, it's just as effective, but it's just really important to emphasize proper form and technique because even with body weight training, you can hurt yourself and injure yourself and crack something. And we don't want none of that, especially during this quarantine time. You know, health is I think on everybody's mind and right now there's a heavy, heavy emphasis on taking care of our bodies and 
you know, mentally, physically, all of that. And working out is a huge, huge part in helping with our mental health, but also, you know, getting your endorphins up and all of that jazz. So I'm going to cut into our very first break for today's episode. And when we come back, I'll be sharing with you guys the pros and cons of bodyweight training. you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do. All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Hey guys, and welcome back to GSMC Fitness Podcast. So in the first segment, we I started to introduce to you guys the concept of body weight training and body weight resistance. So now we're going to be uncovering some of the pros of body weight training. Just like almost anything in life, there's always, you know, pros and cons, good and bad to everything. So let's get into it. The greatest advantage of body weight training is that it can be done anywhere, anytime, right? Because it requires no equipment, no setting up, so it's very easy and convenient. An obstacle stopping many people from starting uh, their fitness journeys is their reluctance to travel and to sign up to a gym. I know location makes a big difference. If your gym is 20 minutes away, you know, you're less likely to want to go work out if as opposed to, you know, working out in the comfort of your own home. It's also particularly useful for clients who are on the road a lot through work where they may not have the time to get to a gym or are stuck in a hotel with a poorly equipped gym or they're living through a pandemic right now and can't find exercise equipment anywhere. So body weight training is the last result. So that's one of the pros to body weight training is that it's easy, convenient. You can do it anywhere, anytime. Next. Body weight training, it keeps you honest. With traditional barbell lifts like the squat and bench press, the quickest way to gain strength is to increase your body weight. By adding pounds to your frame, your leverages increase and your performance will increase, giving you an illusion of progression. On the other hand, though, if you incorporate body weight exercises like the chin up or the dip as indicator lifts into your program, it keeps you honest and it doesn't build your ego, right? You may think you're super strong and lifting all this weight, but take that away and just perform body weight. What are you left with? So it definitely keeps you honest. Say, for example, if your bench press is going up, but your chin up strength is going down, chances are all you've done is actually get fatter just being straight up and honest, okay? Actually, though, when I train clients, I test their body weight abilities and exercises before adding any load. I need to visually see that they have impeccable form when performing a body weight squat or a lunge before adding any weight because if they can't perform the weight or the exercise properly without weight, How is it going to be with weight? It's only going to make matters worse. And this is the safest approach to gaining strength or progressive overload. Like I said, if their form is trash with a body weight squat, it's not going to get any better with added weight. If anything, that's just going to make that person, that individual more susceptible to injuries. So like I said, that's another pro to body weight training is that it keeps you honest. Third. Body weight training can help develop full body tension and stability. 
learning how to generate maximal tension through the body as an important part of developing strength, right? Like we always hear about tension, keep the tension in your glutes, keep the tension in the chest, wherever. So it's very important to learn how to, you know, generate that maximal tension. When you're performing exercises like ring dips, press-ups, L-sits, or frog stance, your body has to work as a unit to keep form and maintain stability. And this will have a strong carryover to exercises like the deadlift where your entire body needs to be working efficiently together to lift the load. And another related bonus is the increase in shoulder stability you'll experience by incorporating certain positional holds and ring work. So I highly suggest that when you are performing these body weight exercises at home, since that's all we're left at right now, you know, to kind of, you know, switch, play with the rep ranges, do a lot of isometrics, aka holding, all of that stuff is going to help you tremendously in developing that full body tension and stability. You know, I know a lot of you gym goers are suffering like me right now and we're missing the gym. And right now, take this time to step back a little bit and almost like work backwards. Like let's start from the ground up again. Let's work on holding a plank for as long as we can with great form. Let's work on, you know, push-ups. That's actually what I'm trying to do is push-ups. I'm trying to perfect my form. It's an exercise I truly hate, but I'm doing it now because it's great for upper body strength and it's great for core strength as well. So right now, take this time to redevelop body tension in certain areas and, you know, increase stability. Next, another pro to body weight training is that it builds a base. And what I mean by this is, there's something to be said about building a base level, a base level of strength using body weight exercises before advancing to fancy training protocols. I mean, you probably see on Instagram these people are doing like a single leg Romanian deadlift with a kettlebell on top of a stability ball. And that stability ball is like on top of another stability ball, like super extra things, right? So you don't need to worry about that. Or for example, Before worrying which direction your pinky finger should be facing on an incline dumbbell curl, you'd probably get more out of increasing your chinning strength from 3 reps to 10 reps. The same can be said about tricep pushdowns and dipping strength. The added benefit of working with body weight exercises targets is it'll encourage you to drop body fat too. So for those who are very weak or you're just starting out, you can gain a lot of benefit from getting better body weight squats, split squats, lunges, press ups, inverted rows, chin ups and dips. So again, it just builds the base. It kind of goes, you know, referring back to the previous point that I mentioned before building a base is just kind of grounds you like make sure you have the basics in lock, even for those who've been working out you know, for a while, for those who've been in a gym for a minute, like still take a step back and take this slow time we have right now to relearn the basics, strengthen the basics so that way we're able, you know, when the COVID-19 is over and the gyms and fitness facilities open their doors back up again to us, we're able to go in and not lose any progress. Another great benefit to body weight training is that it's safer on the joints. And I know this is a huge concern for many as lifting weights can obviously cause injuries and a lot of body discomfort. Generally speaking, body weight training is safer on the joints than weight training as your body can move through its natural range of motion. It's low impact since you're not adding any additional load or barbells or dumbbells or anything. And that's why also dumbbell work is safer than barbell work as your body is less fixed into a certain plane of motion. So it kind of goes, if I were to write out like a, a continuum here, the most high impact would be barbell. Then it would be dumbbell kettlebell and then it would be body weight. So body weight, you're able to go through your full range of motion and again, relearn the basics. For those who have, you know, joint discomfort, this will be a good alternative for you is body weight exercises. 
And last but not least, the best thing about body weight training, and this is a controversial one, and that's why I left it for the end, is that body weight training can build muscle, you guys. Not gonna lie, when I first heard and read this, I was in disbelief. Like, how are you able to build muscle without weight? It doesn't make sense to me, you know? The problem with body weight training is it has a reputation for being only suitable for building endurance and for fat loss circuits, right? However, if you know how to manipulate the difficulty of an exercise, you can perform it so you fail within a 6 to 12 rep range. And doing endless sets of 25 push-ups won't build much muscle. But if you work your way up to doing sets of 12 on feet elevated incline ring press up your chest will grow. So the biggest thing is progressive overloading, constantly challenging our muscles in different ways, different rep ranges, shorten your resting time. There's, I'll, I'm probably going to do my next episode will probably just be dedicated to progressive overload. Exactly what does that mean? Because I know that concept may be a little fuzzy for some who are listening right now. But just remember, you guys, resistance is resistance. It's about knowing how to make the resistance high enough to trigger muscle growth. And that's different for everybody. And just remember that, okay? Resistance is resistance. And you guys, I'm going to cut into another very brief break right now. When we come back from the break, I'll be sharing with you guys some of the cons of body weight training. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hey guys, and welcome back to GSMC Fitness Podcast. So we just got done discussing all of the pros of the amazing benefits of bodyweight training. And I know that very last one left you guys like pondering a little bit about building muscle because I was even skeptical about when I read that. But as long as you're able to progressively overload those exercises, you will maintain and even trigger muscle growth. So let's now get into some of the cons of body weight training because there are some. And the first one being that there's low reward per unit time invested. So mastery in advanced body weight exercises doesn't happen overnight. It takes weeks, months, and sometimes years of practice. While the rewards can be great, the problem is we deal with predominantly busy professionals who don't have the time in the day to spend hours working on body weight skills, right? So there's nothing wrong with it, but clients need the most bang for their buck and training predominantly with weights provides this. So that's one con of body weight training. The next is that it's hard to quantify. So what does that mean? Leading on from the previous point, progressing through a body weight exercises can sometimes be hard to quantify. Progressive overload with weights can be more black and white. You know, you, you add reps, you add sets, you add weight and you're as, and you can take physic or, you know, you can take note of this, of you increasing strength over time. 
as you increase the difficulty of body weight exercises, it can be hard to know whether real progress was made session to session, you know, and it's a long-term game. And for those who are numbers and statistically oriented, it can become a little frustrating because you're, you're, there's no way of really quantifying or keeping track of your progress. So that's another one there. And then another con, the last con here that I'll mention of body weight training is the lack of posterior chain and legs overload. Uh, and I think this is the biggest problem with body weight training, body weight only training is the inability to sufficiently stimulate the posterior chain and thigh muscles effectively. Uh, to work the posterior chain, nothing beats barbells and dumbbells, right? So for anyone who wants to prioritize body weight training, their program, they should ensure they keep some weighted posterior chain work. So ideally, if the gyms were open right now, you would want to add body weight and weighted workouts. And that's actually what I used to do. I would do like uh, barbell squats and then body weight squats right after a superset. The same applies for just like for leg work overall. While pistol squats are a great exercise, very few have the required flexibility to perform them safely. If you guys ever tried a pistol squat, it is so hard. I still can't get it. My ankle is just not that flexible to get down that low. And it's a very heavy quad-based movement. And I hate, fun fact about me, I hate the feeling of my quads burning. Like any other muscle group I'm fine with, like when my glutes burn is fine, when triceps burn, it's fine. But when my quads burn, I'm like upset, okay? Like I hate the feeling of my quads burning. So pistol squats are not my favorite. Other quad-based movements like split squats, lunges, and squats will all require loading eventually for maximum adaptation. So dumbbells and barbells become a necessity. So if you're a beginner starting out, body weight squats would do the trick, but eventually you're going to want to up it with dumbbells and then barbells and progressively overload in that manner. So I guess those are the three cons of body weight training is the low reward per unit time invested. It's hard to quantify and keep track and the lack of posterior chain and legs overload with body weight training. And I'm now going to be sharing with you guys my favorite body weight exercise at the moment. These are body weight exercises that I've been incorporating into my workout routine currently since we are quarantined. Uh, so the first one being sumo squats, of course, I like to do sumo squats because I want to target more hamstring and glute. So I do a sumo squat stance. If you want to target more quad, then you just keep a more narrow stance. You'd want to keep your knees about hip width apart and squat in that manner. But I'm trying to target more quad or more glute and hamstring. So I do a sumo stance. Next, my next favorite body weight exercise are squat pulses. So you would still stand in, a, or I personally stand in the sumo stance and do squat pulses in that way. So I'm changing tempo here and I'm keeping tension in that specific uh, muscle group. Next, we have squat jumps as another favorite of mine. And Basically, any and every squat variation I'm up for. So that's going to be my favorite body weight exercise. It's probably squats, um, changing the tempo and, you know, add some isometrics there. So just do like a hold. That will also, that's another great body weight exercise. So that would probably be my top one. It's just basically any and every uh, variation of a squat. Uh, my next favorite body weight exercise is going to be a reverse lunge. I love a good reverse lunge. Uh, it's a good, great uni unilateral exercise. Unilateral exercises are when you work one half of the body at a time. So I like to, again, target more glute hamstring. So I take a wider step to target more glute and hamstring. If you want to be more quad dominant, then you bring that back leg you're stepping out with and you bring it closer towards your, for, your front leg so it's more quad dominant. 
Next, my other favorite body weight exercise are curtsy lunges. So it's basically the same thing as a reverse lunge, but you're curtsying, you're stepping out to the side. So if my left leg is forward, my right leg is going to come to the side of my left leg. And that's going to target more abductors like your side glute. So that would be my next one is a curtsy lunge. And then my final air quote, favorite body weight exercise are push-ups. Now, these are not my favorite. In fact, I actually hate (laughs) push-ups. But push-ups make me feel like a bad ah, okay? Make me feel like a bad ah when I'm able to do them. So I'm continuously practicing them, and I'm just trying to get better. Um, And also, I before quarantine, I was taking a whole bunch of, like, fitness classes and all of these fitness classes, I was seeing all of these like older women, like just bump out all these pushups with perfect form. And I'm like, I want to be like that. Like they look so good doing these pushups. So that's actually my goal for this quarantine is to improve my pushup technique and form. So with proper form, I'm able to do like five reps, exceptionally good reps. And then I can do up to 10 reps, but the last five are pretty trash, if we're being honest here. Um, my goal by the end of the quarantine time here, however long that's going to be, is to perfect my form and to perform 20 reps, 20 push-ups in one set. That's my ultimate goal is to do 20 at once. So I know I'll get there. I just need to practice. And my overall final thoughts regarding body weight training, body weight exercise is that moving your body through space is underrated. The neuromuscular activity, stability, and complexity required to perform body weight exercises will always trump free weight or machine-based work, okay? Don't underestimate body weight work. This doesn't mean you should overhaul your training with body weight-only routines. You still need, you know, actual load and resistance in your routine, Um, instead, I think we need to take the Bruce Lee mantra of take what is useful and leave the rest, right? So I suggest use a blend of all three, use a blend of body weight, of free weight, of machine, all of those three, when the gyms open up, obviously right now due to our current circumstance, we are not able to. And so use a blend of all three because each serves a benefit that the other can't offer and combined you're able to deliver the optimal transformation that you want and desire so don't underestimate body weight training you guys you are able to get your most optimal results um i know right now we're very limited with equipment so do body weight training focus on your mind to muscle connection take this time to rebuild your base and just work on stability and keeping and developing maximal tension in the particular muscle group that you're working. And you guys, that's going to wrap up today's episode here at the GSMC Fitness Podcast. We covered, you know, the pros and cons of body weight training. We covered my favorite body weight exercises. So I hope it was all very useful and valuable information for you. And I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode here at the GSMC Fitness Podcast. If you liked what I had to cover, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff because that tremendously helps the show. And I want to wish you all a very happy, healthy, and successful week ahead. You've been listening to the GSMC Fitness Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Google Play, and any app where you listen to podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of the shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, from business news to weird news, we cover it all. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook and listen to these podcasts on YouTube. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's podcast.